Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,956. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah! Today I'm in Sarasota, Florida, where it's a little warmer than it is here in Gig Harbor, Washington, with a very special guest by the name of Gary Mance. Gary, welcome to Cars Yeah! Do you have it in gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? (laughs) I have it in gear as much as possible, and I am in good hands. Thank goodness. I see myself more as your wingman or the guy riding shotgun, Mark. I'm so delighted to be on your show. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, uh, put on some good music and uh, we'll enjoy this uh, road trip and uh, you listeners will understand what I mean by that in a minute. But before I give you a proper introduction here, Gary, what's one little thing that maybe most people don't know about you? I think they don't know that because I love radio as much as I do and I get to talk to people like your honorable self frequently, as a matter of fact, they don't realize that for me it was a midlife career change. I was nearly 50, and that was some time ago, when I decided that what I was doing in property management was not satisfying enough. And so I decided to pursue my teenage passion, my dream of entering the world of radio broadcasting. One thing led to another. I met Thomas and Becky Rep, interviewed them on a couple of different programs. And when they needed someone to take over hosting of American Road Trip Talk, they gave me a call and I couldn't say yes fast enough. I think it's just a a dream come true for me to be doing this kind of thing like we are doing right now. You know, this is so cool because this is what my podcast is all about. Cars Yeah! was started to show people out there that if they have a passion for automobiles, they can find a way to work in that field and get paid for it. And I talk to people all the time that have done transitions like you did, pivots in their career. And I'm so happy I didn't know that about you either, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And you you listeners will understand that because today I'm kind of flipping the mic a little bit because Gary is a uh, radio host. He's been kind enough to have me on his show a few times, more than a few times, actually. And uh, we have a lot of fun. So I'm going to be learning from the master here today. But let me give you a proper introduction and we're going to dive into your world. Gary Mance is the host of the broadcast and podcast American Road Trip Talk on 1150 KKNW Seattle and Podcast One. The show airs on Fridays at 1 p.m. Pacific time on 1150 KKNW Seattle and all the shows are available at Podcast One so you can go back and listen to them anytime you want. Created by Thomas and Becky Rep, as he mentioned, producers of the award-winning American Road Magazine, the show brings you unique guests and a discovery of the back roads that embody true Americana. Gary's knowledge of automotive history is growing and greatly exceeded by his intense curiosity about the people, organizations, and finely built machines that sustain a vibrant culture in America. And I'm proud to say that I've been a guest on his show several times, which is fun. A little unnerving for me because they're live unlike my podcast where I can record and go back and fix my fumbles. But you've helped me sharpen my game, Gary. So I'm I'm really appreciative of that. Thank you. Oh, you're quite welcome. Glad to be of service. I didn't know that you needed any of that. You're a smooth cat. <laughs> well, I try my best for sure. Well, we'll be back in just a minute. But first, a word from our valued sponsors. So give them a little love. We'll be right back with Gary Mance talking about road trips, cars, and a whole lot more. Covercraft has the most complete line of custom seat covers available. Choose between the poly cotton seat savers, Endura Precision Fit custom seat covers, Leatherette Precision Fit custom seat covers, and their durable Carhartt seat covers. They're all easy to install and remove. And guess what? They're machine washable too. Easy cleanup to make them look brand new. No more worries about the kids spilling on your seats or your pets damaging your expensive upholstery or leather. Covercraft's quality seat covers protect from damaging pet claws, pet fur, hair, mud, moisture, food, drink spills, drool from permanently damaging your vehicle's fine surfaces. Headrest and armrest covers and color options are also available on many of the styles. And I've got a great offer for you. If you use the code YEAH21, Y-E-A-H-21, 
21 at Covercraft.com. They'll give you 10% off plus free shipping. That's right, 10% off and free shipping with the code ya 21 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. Visit Covercraft.com today. Last year, I changed my collector car coverage to American Collectors Insurance. That's who now protects my Porsche Turbo, the one I call my orange crush. But did you know they also insure your valuable collections of automobilia and other collectibles? If you're like me, you've invested in a lot of cool collectibles over the years. Those items are valuable. And if you were to lose them in a theft or a fire, well, try to get your normal homeowner's insurance to pay you what they're worth. Good luck with that. American Collectors Insurance provides you with assurance and confidence that your collectibles are fully covered. They insure a lot of items, including automobilia, wine, baseball cards, books, figurines, die-cast models, model trains, glassware, sports memorabilia, toys, and a whole lot more. American Collectors Insurance, they've been protecting us enthusiasts since 1976. They provide you with an agreed value insurance policy backed by a long history of taking care of their clients. Give them a call today for your personal agreed value quote at 866-ACA. Yeah, yeah. That's 866-224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of mine, Mark Rains here at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. That's American Collectors Insurance. So, Gary, we are back. So I want to dig a little deeper into the corner or dive a little deeper, I guess I should say, for driving about this transition you made, because this is kind of new to me. And I'd love for you to talk with our listeners if they have not heard your radio show. Now they're going to know about it, about what took you into this field and what you enjoy so much about talking to people every day about all sorts of different things. Because I know when I've been on the show, I typically... Try to always talk about my guests on your show, but you cover the gamut when it comes to traveling around this great country of ours. So uh, grab the wheel, my friend. Gamut, yes, that's a good way of describing it, Mark. <laughs> Thank you for that. I enjoy talking to people about essentially two things. If you break it down, American Road Trip Talk is about where have you been and what took you there. They're the question of where have you been, what great road trips have you taken, which ones are you planning? But then again, how do you plan to get there? I mean, you can fly, you'll get there faster, but look at all that you would miss. And so the car enthusiasts of my acquaintance to a person believe that when they get behind the wheel, first of all, they're in charge. And secondly, they get to stop when they want to. They get to get up when they want to. They stop for a meal when they want to, make a pit stop when they need to, <laughs> and keep going until they have reached that destination about which they probably have been thinking, fantasizing, anticipating for weeks, if not months or years. So this is the chance to be in motion, to be a kinetic dreamer, and then to see that dream realized by your own initiative. Oh, how fun. Now, I find it really wonderful that you... Had a career in property management, something that provided you with a stable job and so forth, but it really perhaps got to a point where it wasn't something you wanted to do. Now, to make a change from that to what you did, where did that all come from? And how did that go over with uh, your lovely wife? And you came home one day and said, I want to do something completely different. <laughs> I had, especially through my church involvement, I had a fair amount of public speaking experience. And even prior to that, I talked to myself and to my friends way back when I was a teenager about the possibilities in radio and how much I would love to do something like that. But as often happens, we detour and then we get into another detour. And before you know it, all these years have passed. And I got to the point in midlife where I thought it's now or never. Mm -hmm. I had people when I was doing church announcements or I was the MC of the annual talent show, for example, people would be asking me which radio station I worked at. And I said, <laughs> well, currently none yeah. there. But if you if you have one in mind, please let me know. Maybe I should be knocking on their door. And so with that kind of encouragement where where people were asking me about it or telling me, you know, you need to be on the radio, it began to seem real to me rather than just a pipe dream. And so I got into that with the idea that it's now or never. How long have you been doing it? Since the 
about in terms of getting paid to be on the radio to you have your little internship where you're trying to learn the ropes and whatnot. But I would say since 2002 wow, long and time. right. And by 2005, I was doing it full time, which is greater radio station because you get benefits there. And then I branched out and began the Manson Mitchell show, which is one of the shows that I host 15 years ago. We're still going strong on Fridays and Saturdays. And then, of course, on Fridays, there is American Road Trip Talk. That's as diversified as I get. But I see those two entities as golden opportunities for me that really I thought for most of my life I had no right to assume could be mine until I said yes to the idea. And that's a lot of success in life, Mark, is saying yes to an idea. If it hurts no one, if it rewards you, if it rewards the people or sustains them whom you love, you must be doing something right. Well, absolutely. And and this is a real inspiration for our listeners out there because I've had many listeners contact me saying, wow, I listened to so-and-so or so-and-so or Gary. And I said, you know, if Gary can do it, why not me? And a lot of this change that occurs in people's lives is just about trying it, just stepping out there and doing it and taking advantage of it. Are there some maybe a little words of inspiration you might offer to somebody listening that's like, oh, but it's so scary or what if it doesn't work or oh my gosh, or did you prepare for this in some way from, a, let's say, like a financial standpoint, have a bit of a runway set aside or did you just dive in both feet forward or how would you inspire somebody to uh, take that bold step and find what they really love? First is decide if it really is for you. Does it fit? Is it consistent with your appreciation of yourself? There's this element of self-consistency. If you're not doing the things you would love to do, ask yourself why. You get a relatively brief trip, at least in this body. People say, you know, you only live once. Well, I don't know that that's true. Maybe reincarnation is true, but it's the only life I'm going to have as me. You're, You're enjoying the only life that you have as Mark Green. So what do you want to do with that time? Your time is limited. Don't waste it. And I would advise anybody and certainly encourage them to look at the things you enjoy most and realize that this is the information age. Back in the day, if you go back, oh, I would say certainly 30 and then 40 and 50 years ago, you had personality radio. We all remember those, you know, Casey Kasem is one name that oh, comes yeah. to mind. It, and the names are Legion. They got into radio. They did it the only way they could at the time. A lot of times it involves hounding a radio station, there, some executive, and then offering to do things for free because, you know, free labor is always welcome until you get such confidence and enough experience under your belt that you can actually ask for a job or just go in and ask for a job and your talent or lack thereof will become evident soon enough. <laughs> so there is that need for initiative to do the things you want to do or, you know, not to be too literal, but do it or die trying because you're going to regret it if you don't pursue that which you once fantasized you could do living your best life. What would that look like? What would that sound like? What would it feel like? Answer those questions and you'll know which way to go. Oh, you couldn't have said it better. That's absolutely true. And the great thing about today is technology have has allowed anyone who wants to put themselves out there to do it for almost free, really almost free. That's true. You know, I mean, you can be a blogger, you can be a podcaster, you can be a TikToker, you can be an Instagram person, whatever. Just start putting yourself out there and seeing how people react to it. It's amazing to me when I look at some of the people that have become massively successive, successive, <laughs> successful, both financially and just popularity wise, that would never have had that happen if it wasn't for the internet and what we can do nowadays. And it's really just a matter of putting yourself out there and giving it a try. Now, you've interviewed some very interesting people. Can you touch on maybe one or two? And I know I don't like it when people do this to me. Who is your favorite guest? (laughs) Of course, it'd be Gary Mance today. But is there maybe uh, or are there maybe one or two people that stand out for you that you went, wow, that was not what I thought it was going to be in a positive way, of course. 
the ones where I didn't think it was going to turn out that way were the negative experiences. And that's just part of life in radio. You can be surprised by somebody who is extremely well credentialed, but maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they don't want to talk about what you want to talk about. They don't want to let out certain facts. And then you have to become a bit of a, a Dick Cavett. Some of our older listeners will oh, yes. know that yeah. name. Yeah. Or David Frost, where you're trying to extract valuable information and insights from people who are not initially willing to share them. So that would be the tough part. The easy part is when you are falling in love with the guest on air. For example, I've had multiple opportunities to interview, and my partner and I, Suzanne, are co-hosts of the show, Manson Mitchell. We had the wonderful opportunity to interview Dee Wallace, who played the, Mary, the mom, on E.T. Yeah. Well, that's a lot to talk about. A career like that, and she's done wonderful films in addition. She was the, uh, the woman mortally threatened, uh, stuck in her car in Cujo, the Stephen King film. Oh, based yes, on that's his right. Novel. And, and we dog. got to talk about that interior journey as this dog's attacking her, and she's stuck in the car with her a kid wounded in the back seat, and, and she's trying to figure out what in the world she's going to do. And so we were able to we were able to help. D. Wallace relaxed enough that she shared everything from her girlhood dreams, childhood stuff, to being a success in a blockbuster film, immortal as it is, E.T., made by none other than Steven Spielberg. There's a lot to unpack there, and it was a golden opportunity when she agreed to sit down with us on a few occasions and just tell us about her life. I also really enjoyed, if you want, if you want to talk to somebody who is straight up with you, who pulls no punches and yet is a very lovely, gracious lady, Loretta Swip from MASH fame. Oh, okay. She's remarkable. These are opportunities I wouldn't have had if I didn't decide to just give it a go in radio. If you had a driving inspiration, an influential person who has kind of mentored you and helped you through this, this career on radio? Yes, and his name is Vin Scully, the uh, immortal play-by-play -play announcer, the best man to ever crack open a microphone and announce a baseball game. Vin Scully of the Los Angeles Dodgers, now retired. He's going on 94 years of age, I believe. Uh, in another uh, few weeks, he's going to turn 94. One of the most remarkable men in the history of broadcasting. He actually can turn a baseball game into grand drama with some comedy included. And he will mix in Bible quotes. He will mix in Shakespeare. And I thought, what a broadcasting pro. He is unsurpassed in his ability to communicate eloquently essentially what is a boy's game and to make it part of your intimate life. And you associate what you're experiencing at the highs and the lows of being a Los Angeles Dodger fan with what is communicated by a man whose words are like pure silk. He is extraordinary. As a matter of fact, when he was still broadcasting, they put him in the broadcasting wing of the Hall of Fame, and he's still working. Usually this is the kind of thing that is bestowed upon you once you've retired, but they didn't know when he was going to retire. He, <laughs> he, was, he was over 60 years with the L.A. Dodgers and many other things he did besides. He was my inspiration. I thought if I can do one one millionth of what he has done and to have any positive influence, I want to do it like Vinny does it. Yeah. Wow. What a treasure. You know, the oldest guest I had on my show is Ed Iskandarian of Isky Cams. He just turned 100 years old this year. And when he was on my show, he was in his uh, mid to late 90s. And the thing I've learned about people that love what they're doing is they don't stop. They just keep finding a way to do it because they really love it, right? Oh, absolutely. And once you love it, I've heard people, uh, the broadcasting cohort of mine from many years ago said, so you've got the sickness, do you? Mm -hmm. There, I understood immediately what he meant. You've got the sickness. It could be the acting bug. It could be, I'm sure people who are into sales who really get off on a great sale. They are salesmen, saleswomen, and they caught that so-called sickness. It's no different in radio. If you love doing something, you just want to keep doing it. You want to keep improving. And if it's lucrative, fantastic. But there are many, many DJs who worked years in the industry for very little pay. They did it because they loved radio and especially because they loved the music. It just gets a hold of you. Well, you do it oh so well, Gary. Nice Thank done. You. Thank You're you. You're welcome. We're going to take one more short break for our sponsors. We come back. 
I want to talk about a challenge. So keep that thought in mind. We're down on a road trip with Gary Mance today. We'll be right back. Did you know that less than 3% of all automotive technicians in the United States are women? You may not be surprised, but you should be concerned because our country is facing a massive technician shortage right now. Skilled, qualified techs are in high demand, and we need young women and men to consider these careers as a viable path to a fulfilling life. I've interviewed hundreds of women in the automotive sector here on Cars Yeah, and I know that women make great techs. That's why I support the nonprofit Tech Force Foundation and its Women Techs Rock initiative to ensure women see themselves in the profession, the industry, and the workforce. Learn more at techforce.org today. I've discovered Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual informed, reasoned opinion based on firsthand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code cars yeah when you subscribe and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. So Gary, let's talk about this. Big challenge, big obstacle, big failure. I asked all my guests this question It's the best part of the show in many ways in that it helps those listening who might be going through something similar to see there is a light at the end of the tunnel that isn't the train coming and that there's a good way to learn from these challenges and failures so you could carry it forward in a positive way. So could you share a story with us? I can share a a story in the sense of sharing a philosophy. And I think sometimes that I draw upon the ancient Stoics who found a way to handle adversity better than most. And that is, I'll tell you, Mark, see, now what you're doing, you're an example of a self-starter, someone who is making this happen using available technology and you succeed brilliantly. That's the way to do it. You should be giving the lecture. You should be giving the TED Talk. But if you're in the world of radio, particularly if you are in the employ of a radio station or a radio group, you just need to understand one thing. We're not all going to be Vin Scully. We're not going to be that broadcaster who is the indispensable voice and the image of whatever entity you represent, whatever you're broadcasting about. The fact is, and if you talk to people who've worked for any length of time in radio, they'll tell you, and I'm going to tell you right now, that you will get fired. You will be let go. Now, they call it laying off or we have to downsize. You got fired. And it's very difficult. It's happened to me. It's happened to just about everybody I've ever met in the industry and usually more than once. Once you are fired, you have to get up, dust yourself off and go find the next place where you can succeed. It reminds me of WKRP in Cincinnati, that uh, theme song about up and down the dial. Well, that's what it is. There, It is a transient field unless you really, really get lucky. The bottom line is, if you get fired, don't retire. Don't get tired of what you're doing. Find a better place to work. Find a better group of people, a better match for yourself, and stay true to your passion. People get fired in this life. That happens that there is hardly a field anyone could name where you're not going to get fired, whether it's difficult to get rid of you or not. If somebody wants to get rid of you, they will. Well, don't let that be a career killer. Don't let that get you down. You are born to be your best self. And as long as you're in your corner, you are halfway there. You know, it's a wonderful philosophy you have there. I have helped a few people who've gone through this over the last six, seven years as a, as a mentor, if you will. And one of the things I've always said to them is, uh, you dodged a bullet you didn't even know was coming. <laughs> ah, well said. <laughs> you know, yeah. And that there's something better out there for you. You just have to go find it now. And then the other thing I've said to people is, what if you decided to leave? 
let's exclude the entire fact that you were laid off, fired, let go, whatever the terminology is. You decided to go do something else. What is that? What does that look like? And it changes mindset because when you get fired, you let get let go, a sponsor lets you go, or someone unfriends you on Facebook and it upsets you. You know, sometimes we take it personally. And if you could just not do that and change the mindset for that moment, for what caused you to be in this new position, it helps open some doors, I think. Don't you? I agree that it opens doors, but to go metaphysical for just a moment, I believe that this is a big universe of possibilities and you will hear and you will see the things that you need to have communicated to you by way of interaction. I think of this as an interactive universe. It's not against you. It's not a cold, hostile place. There are people who would disagree, obviously. There, but I don't see the universe as anything but friendly to my cause and to yours and to and anyone and everyone else. I was sitting in my leasing office one day back, oh my gosh, it was probably like 1999 there. And I answered the phone just with my regular voice. It was a lady looking for an apartment. And when I greeted her on the phone, she said, hi, my name is Barbara. And why aren't you on the radio? <laughs> that's what she said to me. And I thought inwardly, by God, that's it. For yeah. me to hear something like that, I need to be doing something different with my life. And I was primed for that kind of change anyway. And at just the right moment, here were these reassuring words that gave me encouragement. That's not unusual. There are people who are entirely ready, whether they know what you're up to or not. They will offer words of encouragement that they don't even know are that relevant to you. And then you go forward. Yeah, this is such a great thing. I even created a meme for my social media that is, uh, I, and I've got to look it up to get the right words, probably more eloquent than I can say at this moment. But it basically says, encourage somebody today. You'll change a life. And you're exactly right. And just a little nicety, a little, that word, you should be on the radio or, wow, you should, you know, you've got a talent there or, wow, you, you pour me a mean cup of coffee, you know, it just goes so far in, in making somebody's day better and in making sure that that person knows that you acknowledge that they exist. You know, some of us go through a checkout counter or a coffee stand or whatever, and you never even look up. You know, people are on their phones. They never even look up at the person that's taking their money or serving them. Uh, encourage somebody today. I'd encourage listeners, make an effort every day to encourage somebody, even if it's yourself in the mirror. Encourage somebody every day. It'll make your life so much better. How about a bucket list item? Is there something looking ahead in your life you'd really like to accomplish or do? Oh, any number of things, Mark. The first one that comes to mind is that because on one side of my family, I have uh, roots in the British Isles, but I've never been to England. I've never been to Scotland. I've never driven through London. And maybe that's a good thing. Piccadilly Circus looks <laughs> mighty crazy to me. Oh, yeah. There, but that is one of my top bucket list items. I would love to go to the United Kingdom and to travel around, not to fly over so much, although I wouldn't mind taking British Rail because that could, they have a pretty good system there in the UK. But I would like to rent a car and make sure that I drive on the right side of the road so that I'm not yes. causing any accidents. <laughs> yeah, be careful. But to drive down the coast of England, to go to Wales, to go and then cross over to Scotland. These are just beautiful, beautiful experiences waiting to happen. And I would be very sad if I came to the end of my life and didn't experience all that it has to offer within however much time is allotted. You know, if you go to England, unless you've got just bushel baskets filled with money, it would be difficult to afford two weeks in England, but probably you could find a way to work that out. Maybe you're staying with a friend. Maybe you're staying uh, at an Airbnb, which has become internationalized. It is possible today, as mobile as we are, to go and see the places we only thought about in our dreams. And for me, that's number one. Oh, you got to do that. 
I've had many guests on my show that talk about the wonderful driving in England, and especially Scotland, and some of the roads up there that are just absolutely spectacular and the green hillsides. And definitely you got to figure out a way to get that done uh, for sure. I've been fortunate to spend a lot of time driving around Europe. My previous job allowed me to travel. I'd probably go to Europe five times a year, usually seven to 10 days. Always rent a car. Rarely took the train, although it would have been easier. But I always rented a car so that I could drive and go kind of through little villages and towns. And plus, I love driving, right? And I'd always rent something fun because over there you could rent things like Porsches and BMWs and Alfa Romeos. Go to racetracks. Some of them let you drive on the racetracks. Don't tell the rental car company, though. They right. <laughs> <laughs> but you definitely have to do that, my friend. That sounds wonderful. Let's talk about a special vehicle, perhaps, in your life. Has there been a special vehicle in your life? Maybe it's the first car you had or something that stands out? My first car, which I received as a gift from my parents when I turned 17, was an old Delmon 88. Oh, my and, gosh. <laughs> and my buddies used to call it the gunboat. They <laughs> they drove things like, you know, an early version of a Camaro or a Ford Pinto wagon, these sorts of things. But I had the gunboat. Yes, I am fond of it still. But I'll tell you, interestingly enough, Mark, and if you ask me, I'm still trying to figure it out. I don't know what the mystique is, but I have the most affection for my 1972 Super Beetle. (laughs) It was sky blue. It had terrific problems with vapor lock. Oh, it was maddening Mm. there. But that gas mileage and the ability to just putt putt around and to enjoy being in this space, which gave you plenty, and I'm six foot three, gave me good headroom, gave me good leg room, and an inexpensive way to get around. It also spoke to a philosophy of mine, which is, and this was just like, this was the living embodiment of it, really. I would rather be, on any given day, the tortoise rather than the hare. (laughs) <laughs> there, there was a guy one time, a buddy of mine, co-worker, and he said, you know, he had a souped up uh, Chevy. Oh, man, he was so proud of that car and justly so. But he said, you know, let's get there. Uh, I'd love to race you sometime. You've got a little tuna boat there. I'll blow you away. And I said, you know what, pal? I'll take you up on that. Here's what we'll do. We were in Southern California where I lived at the time there. And I said, let's get the start. Whatever it is, whatever corner you want to go, whatever intersection, let's go. And you can race ahead of me. Of course, you're going to blow me away for a while. But I want this race to end at the Las Vegas city limits. (laughs) One thing, one condition. We're each allowed one tank of gas. Yeah, you'll never get there. There you go. (laughs) Yeah, the the Beetle, I mean, that's just a car that continues to be loved to this day. My sister's first car was a 72 Super Beetle that we, my dad and I found for her, and then we took it apart and had a friend of mine paint it a metallic blue color. Uh, I remember it had a white interior, too, which was kind of the blue and white was neat for Southern California. I had a 67 Carmen Ghia because I like something mm-hmm. a little sportier. Basically the same car, though, with a different body on it. But those are cars that just make people smile, kind of like the Mini Cooper. Uh, you know, I mean, the, the Beatles just amazing how that car had a longevity that was just incredible. So I understand. Now, I'm going to be your automotive psychiatrist. So sit back on the couch, take a walk in your mind. This is a question that I'll bet no one's ever asked you. If you were manifest as a vehicle, this isn't what you want to be. This is the man in the mirror, how you perceive yourself manifest as a vehicle. What would Gary Mance be, but more importantly, why? I'm glad I picked the right shrink because (laughs) when I think about cars, and I put some thought into this over the past few days. It's so interesting that you you would bring this up, Mark. If I could be the guy who owns the car that turns the heads of people, it would be, first of all, all electric. And, you know, that can't come fast enough. We really need a lot more charging stations because we are going to move inevitably in that direction. We're doing so now. I don't need a Tesla. You know, that would be quite lovely there. But I would love to have a, even if it's a kit car, really, I would love to have a, an electric version of the Studebaker Avanti. Ooh, okay, interesting. It just looks different. It looks avant-garde. 
Mm-hmm. And I used to, when I was a kid, they were, you had the Ivani's, I mean, the originals out on the road. And oh my God, I got rubber neck. I was just staring at those. And I thought that that thing looked very nearly space age in its design. Mm-hmm. And if you couple that with all electric technology, man, I can't imagine it being better. It's, it's such a unique car. I don't know if you knew this, that, but when that car was produced, early 60s, I believe, is that when that car came out? I believe so. I think so. It was the fastest production car in the world upon oh. its introduction. You could go up to 178 miles an hour. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it had a supercharged 289 cubic inch motor, which gave it that power. But the supercharger definitely helped. I think it was around 250 horsepower, something like that. But yeah, the famous Raymond Lowy, who designed that car. And anybody who knows car design knows Raymond Lowy and that name. It definitely stuck out. And I'll tell you, our local museum here, the LeMay Museum, they have the first one. Oh, wow. I would love to see that. Well, next time you make your way out here to the Pacific Northwest, I will take you to that museum. You're you on, buddy. Car. There you oh, go. Oh, that would be terrific. That's that is a dream car. That was somebody's dream, and they gave it form, and they decided they were going to do it differently. And it's unmistakable from any other vehicle, in my experience. Oh, it definitely is. And what's fun about your concept here is more and more people are starting to do exactly what you're talking about. And I've talked about that on your show when you had me as a guest on Trip Talk. That people are taking some older cars now and making them full electric, uh, which is kind of fun. Uh, Even my friend up here in Canada, just north of us, Henry, uh, who owns Intermechanica, is making Electromechanica reproductions of Porsche Roadsters and Speedsters and putting electric power plants in them. He's going to start selling them next year. So it's being done. So maybe somebody might grab one of those Avantes and throw some power packs in them and turn it into an electric car. Uh, I think that would be pretty cool. Is there a book that you'd like to share with our listeners that you've really enjoyed reading? You know, I would say, rather than mention one specific title, because this man's love is so deep for the automotive world and the sheer kinetic thrill of it all, I think of our mutual friend, Tom Cotter. Ah, yeah. Yeah, the finder of the barn. The car in the barn. Yeah. Yeah, And Route 66 finding the places, which is something I learned, you know, uh, I would never qualify in a million years as an expert on cars. But one thing I learned, speaking of Studebaker, is that you don't want to put it in a barn in a wet climate, like around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where it certainly can get wet, it can snow, and you have some adverse conditions in winter. Because during a trip we took, and this is way back in 1969, to visit my grandparents. My dad and I went out to an old barn they had where there was stored a Studebaker. Really? I can't even remember the model. It wasn't an Avani, but this was just, it was a Studebaker, okay? Uh And so they said, hey, look at this, you know, I'll bet it still runs. And so they rolled it out. They were gonna have to get it, uh, you know, jump started. But they pulled it out of this barn and they said, get in, get in. So I got in the back seat. My dad decided to ride shotgun. He got in the front seat whereupon he immediately put his feet through the floorboard. Oh, oh no. Yeah, rest. <laughs> the, tin, Tom, the tin worm got it. <laughs> the tin worm got it, whereas Tom Cotter, who's written numerous books, uh, it's, he's a, a wonderful raconteur about car culture, and he indicated that some of his best finds have happened where he knew that the temperature, the climate was such that it may be a little dusty there, but if it's dry enough, and he found this in places like Texas and Arizona, New Mexico, maybe Southern California, you aren't going to have that kind of untoward experience that's so disappointing because they're not exposed to the elements or surrounded by the climate features that would tend to make it difficult to restore a car and eventually, if you don't keep it, to sell it. Yeah. There, yeah. Weather was, he, he knows how to make weather his friend when he's on these barn find hunts. Yeah. The key is to not be storing a car in a barn that has a dirt floor because all that moisture just gets sucked right through <laughs> into the car and uh, causes all sorts of problems. But Tom's been a guest multiple times. I think three times now on uh, Cars Yeah! podcast. And uh, he's a great guy. Yeah, I've gotten to know him, which is wonderful. He went on a great road trip looking for barn find cars in Cuba, 
with Bill Warner of oh. uh, Amelia Island fame, and they ended up writing a book about it, which is cool. So I'll put a couple of Tom Cotter books on your show notes page in the Cars Day website uh, for Tom Carter. Cotter. In fact, uh, he jokes, he calls me his secretary because... He's a little bit elusive about how to be found, and a lot of people find him on my website, so they email me wanting to get a hold of Tom, and then I forward those to Tom, since I don't share my guest private contact information. And I don't think a month goes by without two or three of those coming through, and I keep saying, when am I going to get paid for all these these services? Get a and, percentage. Yeah, he says, I'll send you a book. So there you go. Great I would books. be one of the ones owing you, Mark, because you introduced me to Tom Cotter. I owe you, buddy. Oh, no, you don't owe me anything. I love connecting people. That's That's what I love to do. That's what it's all about. So I'm going to take you on the ultimate drive before we say goodbye today. That means you get to pick any car in the world to be in, any person living or deceased, and you can be going anywhere. Now, you may have already answered this question through the car we talked about and that trip to the UK, but that's okay. So if I can make this happen for you, what does it look like for you? I would look, well, my partner, Suzanne Mitchell, is the uh, lady who is, and she's a heck of a good driver herself and a safe <laughs> driver there, but if she wants to ride shotgun, I would wish to go on a well-planned route throughout most, if not all, of America's national parks. Mm. That would be a dream come true for me because the national park system is meant to be a permanent legacy and part of the American landscape, part of the great legacy of this nation. I have been to, I'm going to say about 10, maybe 11 national parks, but I want to get to them all. And I think it would be beautiful because if you handle it right, for example, if you go to Yellowstone, which I have done, there you drop down from Yellowstone and then you're at Grand Teton National Park. I mean, it's right there. And there are national monuments beside Devil's Tower. That was a day. That was a hike there. To be able to do those sorts of things state by state is the kind of joy that lasts with you forever. That's when you're socking it away in the memory banks for when you're old enough, God willing, that you have your memories to rely on. Mm -hmm. They are the kind that will not fail to bring you joy. So since I can make this trip happen for you, are you going to be in an Avanti? I would do that. Absolutely. (laughs) Now, here's the thing. See, this is the tricky part. Would I do it? You bet I would do it, provided there are enough charging stations. Yeah. (laughs) Where do you think I found multiple charging stations and in a glorious location in one of the most unexpected places for me? And that was in the middle of Wyoming. Really? They had these charging stations at a rest area, which appeared to be of recent vintage in Wyoming. And I thought if they can do it here in Wyoming, you know they can do it in California and New York and Florida and Texas, et cetera. It's a question of political will, finding the means and allowing people to embrace this technology, which, as you have reminded me, isn't new technology. The innovations are new. The technology goes back to before the time Lincoln became president. Yes, Yeah, electric cars. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. You know, my guest yesterday was John Cos... He's got a very odd last name, Koswick. Koswick. (laughs) It's hard to say, at least for me, but... He is a gentleman who's worked for 30, 35 years uh, designing building engines. He worked at Ford Motor Company in their diesel division for 30 years and so forth. And on my show with him yesterday, he talked about the other thing that we really need to be doing is alternative fuels as well, hydrogen and others, because just relying on only EV cars to make this work is going to be a very long, long slug for everyone because these charging stations are the problem and the, the, how long it takes and so forth. But you listeners can go back and listen to my talk with John. I'm going to have him back too because he's got some really interesting things to say about it. But that sounds like a wonderful trip. This country has so much to offer and I would like to get out and see more of these national parks myself. I haven't been to enough. Gary, you have been a consummately perfect guest today, and I knew that you would be. I want to thank you for spending some time with me today, and I want you to leave us with maybe some words of wisdom, a success quote, or a mantra. I got it from a bumper sticker, Mark, believe it or not. (laughs) I saw it exactly one time in my life as I was driving away. I was on a freeway driving away from Irvine, California toward my home in North Orange County. And here comes this fancy car. might have been a Mercedes. And a bumper sticker on a Mercedes, isn't that a crime somewhere? But nevertheless, (laughs) this was a shiny new one, too. Yeah. The bumper sticker said, what works is what wins 
and below it, it said, what wins is what works. <laughs> and I thought, I cannot encapsulate a philosophy of pragmatism and self-reliance better than that. Those are words to live by. I love it. How can people learn more about you and Trip Talk? Go to AmericanRoadMagazine.com. And there you can look at the magazine. And there is some good stuff in there about the show. But primarily, it's the magazine. It's a glossy little wonder. And the show grew out of that. AmericanRoadMagazine.com. And of course, there you can go to 1150 using the numbers 1150kknw.com. Not only if you're in Puget Sound area, which is where we have the live broadcast for American Road Trip Talk, but absolutely anywhere on earth. If you can get to Wi Fi, if you can get to a computer, you can get to 1150kknw.com. And sometime or another, you're going to hear Mark Green being <laughs> interviewed by me on the radio, much to my delight, because it's always a, a real trip when you come on. You are inexhaustible in your knowledge. And that's why we keep having you back. Well, I really appreciate it. It means the world to me. I'm very humbled. Also, you can go to podcastone.com slash American-road-trip.talk. And I'll make all these links on Gary's show notes page. Just go to carsyad.com, type in Gary Mance, M-A-N-T-Z, and you'll find all those links. I encourage you to follow him, listen to his shows. You can catch up on all the podcasts, including a few with yours truly. Gary, this has been fun to flip the mic on you. I knew you'd be uh, an excellent guest. This will be an easy one until you and I talk again, my my friend, I'll see you down the road. May it happen soon. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Did you know that Cars Yeah! is in the top 1% of all podcasts based on listenership, according to Lipson, the premier RSS feed for podcasts in the United States? That's right. And Cars Yeah! is the only five-day-a-week automotive-focused podcast for you to get your message into the ears of thousands of listeners daily from all over the world. Plus, DuPont Registry recommended Cars Yeah! is one of their top 10 car podcasts for you to enjoy. Cars Yeah! has experienced tremendous growth, plus your ads are evergreen, meaning they never go away. And more and more listeners find Cars Yeah! every day for their daily dose of automotive inspiration. Do you want to expose your brand to a highly targeted list of automotive enthusiasts in a very unique in very personal way, well, I can help you. Contact me, Mark Green, at mark at carsyad.com or through the website at carsyad.com today to learn more. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to carsyad.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!